Welcome everybody. Um, today we're going to start with um, just developing the very basic notions that I want everybody to be up to speed to. Uh, we're going to start with the axioms for set theory next class. Um, so as I was saying, uh, the idea for this class is to develop um, the axioms for set theory on which we're going to develop or we're going to see how one can develop all of mathematics. But before that, I want to just uh, review some very basic notions about sets, since these are going to be our building blocks. These are going to be like the main concept out of which we're going to develop all the other concepts. We're going to look at five things, uh, sets, empty set, inclusion, power set, and at the end we'll talk about a little bit about the universe of sets, which I guess that's going to be new for most of you. Uh, all right, so let's get into this. Sets. Uh, you always know what uh, sets are, so I hope. What is a set? A set is just a collection of objects, right? Uh, that's all there is to it. The set is a collection of objects. I, you can picture it as a, like a plastic bag where you put a bunch of objects inside. Um, that's a set, all right? And Let's start with how we define sets, all right? So the most classical way to define a set is to define a set by uh, listing all its elements, okay? So just list all the elements and now you have a set. So for instance, that set A contains the elements two, three, five, seven. That's exactly what the set is. Another way to describe a set is by describing it. For, in, for instance, let's say B is a set of all the prime numbers which are below 10. So that's a description of B by describing what the elements of it look like. Or for instance, more mathematically, we can write that over there, which says that B is a set of all X in the natural numbers such that X is prime. So that bar over there means like such that. So X in N, N for the natural numbers, such that X is prime. So those two lines are exactly the same, one more, more formal than the other one. Okay, so we got these two sets. Uh, a and B, are they equal? They were just defined differently, but yes, they are equal. Why are they, are, are they equal? Well, they have exactly the same elements, right? A has 2, 3, 5, 7. What are the prime numbers below 10? 2, 3, 5, and 7, right? So there is a something that we will develop, we'll um, mention next time, which is the principle of extensionality. It's actually going to be an axiom that says uh, that if two sets have the same elements, then they are the same set, okay? So as things, as objects, these sets are the same. Not only they're, well, they're equal, they are exactly the same thing, all right? So if you have the same element, you're the same set, okay? So a set is just defined essentially by what's inside it, all right? For example, the sets 2, 3, and 2, 2, 3, 3, and 3, and 2, they are defined differently, well, you can see the order, but they all have the same elements, right? The elements are 2 and 3, and that's it. Those are the elements in this set. So these two sets, these three sets, are actually completely equal. They have the same set. The order of the elements doesn't matter. How many times the elements show up doesn't matter. The elements don't show up many times in set, they're only there once. So all it matters is which elements are inside. And in those three cases, 2 and 3, are the only elements that are inside, and therefore these three these two sets are the same thing. Okay, um, the belong symbol is gonna be the most important symbol for all the course. We're gonna be developing all of mathematics out of just one symbol, that symbol out there. Out there. So it's definitely gonna be very important for us. Um, I don't think we need to do many examples, let's just do one. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the number 3 um, belongs to the set in our example up there. Yeah, so that's how we write it. 3 belongs to A. Uh, so that means 3 is in the set A up there, while 8 is not in the set A that we define up there. Yeah, so belongs does not belong to. And the symbol is something called epsilon, because it's like a Greek epsilon. All right, so let's move on to the second part of this short class, uh, the empty set. The empty set is a set that has no elements at all, right? So 
That's what it's called empty set. It's a set, but it has nothing inside it, right? We denote it with the letter phi. It's a Greek letter phi. Can there be two different empty sets? You think you have an empty set here, an empty set here? Different? No, because if you have empty sets, we know what the elements are, and the elements are none, nothing. So two empty sets have the same elements, meaning both have nothing. All right? So same elements, that means they are the same set. What about these two guys up here? The empty set and the set that contains the empty set. Are these the same set? The answer is uh, no. They are not the same set. They are different things. This one is the empty set, has nothing inside. There is nothing inside the set. The other one is the set that contains the empty set. All right, so it has one element, the element being the empty set. One has no elements and the other one has one element. Even though the element is the empty set, the empty set is a thing. So you can put it inside other things and now you have a set which has one thing inside, namely the empty set, all right? So, so the empty set has nothing inside, but itself is a thing, right? So it's like, it's like if you imagine an uh, empty plastic bag, like I just says very thin nylon bag, empty, has nothing inside, it's like the empty bag, but it's still something, it's a bag, it's empty, but it's still a bag, and if you put this bag inside another bag, then this a second bag has something inside, namely an empty plastic bag, so it's one bag inside the other, right? So that's the difference between the empty set and the set that contains the empty set. One is like a plastic bag, and the other one is a plastic bag with a bag inside. Okay, another very important notion is going to be the notion of inclusion. Okay, a set is a set A is said to be a subset of another set B if, and we write this uh, A inclusion symbol B, uh, not to be confused with belongs. We're going to mention that again. Uh, so A is a subset of B if every element of A is also an element of B. Okay? So every member of A is a, if every member of A is a member of B, we say that A is a subset of B. For example, the set that contains the number 2 alone is a subset of the set that contains 2 and 3, right? So the only element of A is 2, and that one is also an element of B. And this set is also a subset now of this set that contains 2, 3, 5, and 7. And it's a subset of the set that's 2, 3, 5, and 7. Well, that's because they are the same set. The last two, the last two over there are the same set. So this is a subset. Every element of the first one is an element of the second one because it's just the same. Okay, so let's repeat that. We, we shouldn't get confused between the symbols A included in B and A belongs to B. All right, so the top one up there is uh, A included in B and the bottom one down there is A belongs to B. They are very different things. Let's look at an example. The set that contains the number 2 is a subset of the set that contains 2 and 3. We said that before. But the set that contains number 2 is not a member of the set that contains 2 and 3. All right? So it's not a member. The members are only 2 and 3, not the set with 2. All right? The same with the plastic bag. One thing is a plastic bag with 2 inside, and another thing is a number 2 by itself. If you, uh, if you look at the number 2 alone, well, the number 2 alone does belong to the set that has 2 and 3. So that's the difference between that, those two. And the number 2 alone is not included in the set that contains 2 and 3, right? Uh, because, well, it's not a set itself. It's a number. Which will become sets later. Let's not get into that. Let's make a quick observation. And that is that if a set A is included in a set B, and B is included in C, then A is included in C, all right? The reason for this is that if every element of A is an element of B, and every element of B is an element of C, then every element of A is an element of C. Okay, let me ask you guys a question. Is, there, is it the case that if we have that A belongs to B, and that B belongs to C, 
then A belongs to C. What do you guys think? And the answer is no. That's not the case. All right. So again, most examples that's that's not going to be the case. Uh, for instance, we had examples. The number two belongs to the set two that contains two and three, and the set that contains two and three belongs to to a set that contains these two things, uh, empty set and the set that contains two and three. All right, do you guys see that? So the set that contains two and three is a member of this weird bigger set, but two itself is not a member of the weird set, right? The weird set has got only two members, empty set and the set with two and three, so two is not one of those two elements. All right, so we, transitivity does not hold um, with belongs. Okay, but let me ask you another question. Are there sets A, B, and C for which this actually holds? So we said that it doesn't hold for always, but can you find examples A and B and C such that A belongs to B, B belongs to C, and also A belongs to C? What do you guys think? Yes, no, yes, no. Yes, the answer is yes. There are examples like that. They are a bit strange. Uh, not too much. But yes, we can build examples like that. No, it's not always the case, but you can build an example where this is actually the case. For instance, C is the set that contains two on one side and the set with two and three on the other side. All right? So C, uh, both A and B are members of C. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next topic, uh, the power set. Okay, the power set of a set A is going to be the set whose elements are all the subsets of A. Okay, so we put take all the subsets of A and we put them all inside a single set that we call power set of A. And we denote it with this calligraphic P of A. Alright, so that's power set of A set of all X's such that X is a subset of A. Um, for instance, let's, let's look at a couple very simple examples. Uh, if you have our favorite examples so far, the set with two and three, what are the subsets of this guy? Well, you're gonna put them right here. So the set we contain only two, the set that contains only three, the whole set, two and three, and the empty set. All right, so those guys, those four guys, are all the subsets of two and three, all right? Only two, only three, the whole set, two and three, and the empty set. Yeah, so the empty set uh, is a subset of every other set, all right? So that's because to be a subset, you, you require that every element of the empty set belongs to the, the set B, and that's trivially true, because the empty set has no elements. So the empty set is a subset of every other set. It doesn't belong to every other set, but it's a subset of every other set. Okay, so maybe we just look at a, a simple example, set which contains only one element, two, has two subsets, empty set, and the whole set. Uh, what if we look at this, the power set of the empty set? Uh, what are the subsets of the empty set? Well, we said that the empty set is a subset of everything, in particular the empty set, it's a subset of itself. But everything is a subset, a subset of itself, and that's it. That's the only subset of the empty set. So one question for you guys: uh, If A is a set that has n elements, n is some number, uh, how many elements are there in the power set of A? How many elements does power set of A have? What do you guys think? Well, let's take a look at uh, the examples right there. So empty set has zero. Power has one, one element, the power set has two, and the other one, the top one, we have two elements in two, three, and the power set has four. What do you think you can derive a rule from there? Maybe you can try the case for three. And the answer is two to the n, all right? And that's because if you have a set A with n elements, so the way you build a subset is by taking each element put in some and not others. So for each element, you either put it in or out. The, other, the second element, in or out. The third element, in or out. So you have two to the n possibilities of subsets of A. 
Okay, so another topic for today is going to be the set of all sets. Uh, what is that? Uh, is that a set? Well, no. So the set of all sets is not going to be a set. So I shouldn't even say the set of all sets, because that's not a thing. If it was a set, we will get into trouble. So let's see why. So suppose it is a set, and we call it V. Okay? So in that case, we will have that V belongs to B, right? Because if V is a set, and V is also the set of all sets, V will belong to V. Which it sounds weird, but so far, so good. Uh, but what if we do this? We consider the set of all members of this guy V, which don't belong to themselves, which is more natural. No sets shouldn't belong to themselves, but whatever. This V that we had up there seemed to belong to itself, uh, so some of its members will belong to itself, some won't. So let's consider the ones that don't. And if we do, then we ask, okay, that's so set B belong to itself? Well, what's, oh, that's CG trying to answer. Uh, yes, you can, you can help me with the answer. Okay, so does B belong to itself? Um, well, the members of B are the ones that don't belong to themselves. So to be a member of B, you have to not belong to yourself. So B is a member of B, even only if B doesn't belong to B. And that was obvious contradiction, right? So this contradiction comes because we assume up there that V was a set, that we have a set of all sets. So this is like a quick contradiction that we get from assuming that there is a set that contains all sets. V does not exist as a set, we got, we're not going to call it a set anymore. What are we going to do? We're going to call uh, this thing a class. Okay, so this is a word that we reserve for collections of things that are so large that we couldn't call them sets themselves. This is an informal word. All right, so it's not, it's not going to be part of our axiomatic system. So in ZFC, in this set of axioms, what formally what we do about these things is we just do not talk about them. Okay, we have no way to refer to the set of old sets within ZFC. Okay, it's not an object in um, in the universe. Okay, so. Last, uh, let's talk a little bit about the universe of all sets. Maybe that's another way to call this guy. And how that's built. Um, um, we're gonna, this is going to be very clear at the very end of the course. Um, but let's just to get an intuition of what all the objects in our universe are going to look like. Let's um, write down what the universe of sets is going to be like. At least the beginning. So we're going to start with uh, very basic elements and we're going to put them in a set called V0 and these are basic, basic elements that are going to be called atoms. All right, so V0 is the set of atoms and the atoms are just things which are no sets. All right, so we start with them. I don't know, for instance, you could think you maybe you want the numbers to be part of your universe and you just put the numbers in like say, let's say the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you put them in, uh, they are not sets, they are called atoms because they are indivisible, they have nothing inside, right? So these are not sets, these are the building blocks. Uh, so you start from them, and then you start building up, all right? So then you define a new set, that you call V1, that is the power set of V0, so the, all the sets of atoms, so the subset of the set of atoms, right? So this uh, V1 contains sets of atoms and also the atoms. And then V2 is the subsets of V1 and also the elements of V1, all right? So you're putting everything together by building subset of subsets of atoms, now in V2. Now when you go to V3, you do subset of subsets of subset of atoms and everything you've so far, and then you put, you keep on building, keep on building, keep on building, and then you put everything together in something that we call V omega that contains everything we build in uh, any number of steps. And after we build V omega, we now take the subsets of V omega. So V omega plus one is a power set of V omega. And we add all of V omega. And we keep on going. Then we build V omega plus two. 
and that's going to be the subset of v omega plus 1 and the elements of v omega plus 1 and then v omega plus 3 and so on and so forth so we keep on going keep on going keep on going and then after infinity many steps we find v omega plus omega which is going to be the union of everything we built so far all right including the v0 v1 and v omega v omega plus 1 all of those guys is that it no once we're there now we take the power set of v omega plus omega so we take all the subsets of v omega plus omega and now we have even more sets and then we keep on going v omega plus omega, omega plus omega plus 2 so on and so forth and we keep on going through the ordinals which we're going to see later in the course we're going to uh, talk about ordinals and this type of construction like two-thirds of the course okay so one last question uh these atoms that we started with what should we choose for the atoms what are these atoms coming from who are they and the answer we're going to choose uh, in ZFC, in this axiomatization we're going to be talking through this course, is the following. In ZFC, we have no atoms. Okay? So, it's going to take a simple solution. Just no atoms at all, and we build everything, everything from scratch, everything from nothing. So, V0 is just going to be the empty set, no atoms, we start from nothing V1 is a set that contains only the empty set and V2 contains the empty set and the set with the empty set V3 subset of these guys and so on and so forth and that's gonna be, and then we continue V omega, V omega plus omega so on and so forth and that's how we're gonna get all the sets in our universe and using these guys we're gonna define the numbers the real numbers, functions, everything is going to be defined starting from the empty set building up. Okay, so that's that's it for today. Uh, next time we're going to go through the axioms, or at least the first few axioms. We're going to see the other axioms later in the course. See you next time.